Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on the Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me. Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. The Mira Paibi are a highly respected, if not revered institution in Maite society. They're also at the forefront of the present struggle between the Kuki and Maite communities. But have the Mira Paibi been misunderstood by the country? And have they been misreported and misrepresented by the media? Joining me now to talk about the Mira Paibi is one of its young and rising leaders, Ahebam Chanthuisana Chanu. Ms. Ahebam, for the benefit of viewers who are not Manipuri, can I start by asking how you would define the Mira Paibi? What sort of organization is it? What does it stand for? Okay, uh, thank you so very much, Karan. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, make very clear that it's Maira Paibi, means the toast bearer. Mai, that means the light toast bearer. So Maira Paibi in Manipur, uh, they have different roles. Since from long history, uh, we can see from uh, 1904 to 1939, where uh, there were two uh, Nupila women war in Manipur against the British. And from that, in 1970s, Maira Paibi have rose up with by all the women of Manipur of those days. The main objective of, you know, coming up from Maira Paibi was to control the alcoholic because many of our, uh, especially the male section of the society have, you know, targeted, uh, I mean, because of the alcoholism, so to control that. But again, it changed in 1980s, it, it changed to save the life of the people of Manipur from the ASPA. When ASPA was, imposed in Manipur, there were many people who were trapped and who were, you know, killed, who were assaulted in many other forms. We have been tortured by the, in the frame of the ASPA. So to protect those people, our innocent people, our women, many women have been installed from every section, not only the Maitre society, but from all the sections of the societies who have gone through the assault by the ASPA. So for these, our Maira Paibi have stood from there. And also in present society, Maira Paibi doesn't stand only for one society and only for one objective. Maira Paibi role is different. It stands, always stand for the, you know, humanitarian, for the non-violence, then for the, you know, human rights of the people from, for all the sections of society in Manipur, not only for Maite. Okay. So always in time to time, Yes. Now Let I'm told so that your, to... I'm told that your apex leader, Emma Nyangbi, was part of the famous nude protest that happened in 2004 when Thangja Manorma was raped and killed. Am I right? Yes. So she yes, is. Yes, it, it is right. So she is a very famous person, Emma G. Yes, her name is Laurembam Nganbi, and we call her with respect, Ima means mother, means mother Ima Nganbi. Yes, she is a part of that protest against the Assam rifle when um, Thangzam Manorama was, you know, uh, raped and killed. So 
against the AFSPA, against for the uh, Manorama, are all mothers, not only Imang and the other 11 mothers, they all stood up for the Manorama and for other women in the Manipur. Yes, he is, she is a very uh, respectable Ima of Manipur. Now, does this explain the Mira Paibi's long-standing distrust and dislike of the Assam Rifles? After all, it's alleged that they were responsible for the killing of Manorama. Is that why you have this distrust and historic dislike of the Assam Rifles? No, we are not always dislike or distrust the Assam Rifle, all the Assam Rifle, but it's it depends on the, you know, the we have been experienced lots of other, uh, you know, extra judicial killing and who we have lost many of the innocent people in Manipur, not only Thangzam Manorama, not only one person from all section of the uh, people have faced the impact of this Dragonian egg aspa. So our mothers, our mothers of Manipur, Myra Paibi, always stood up for all the people of Manipur, not only for Maite, I am repeating this again, Myra Paibi doesn't work only for the section of Maite, they work for the whole of Manipur. This but is to be very clear to the, all the people of the nation. I understand that you work for all people of Manipur, not just for the Maite. But explain to me, why have you developed this enormous distrust of the Assam Rifles? Is it because of the way they have behaved since the troubles began on the 3rd of May? Or is there a history that goes further back in time? No, no, it is not only, we cannot say that it is only the history, but we have already, uh, you know, re uh, removed AFSPA in some part of Manipur. So from there, we have, uh, we have experiencing a, a kind of uh, a peace, not a total peace since then, we don't experience that much of AFSPA killing in Manipur. But recently, if we speak of now, the current situation of Manipur, why, especially the Myra Paibi have, you know, coming out to the street and we are, uh, it seems that it is portrayed to the world, to the to the, uh, to the the whole of India, that Myra Paibi are blocking the Assam rifle. Or the I'll other come to that in a moment's time. But the first, reason is because... No, no, no. I'll come to that in a moment's time. But please explain to me, why do you believe that the Assam rifles are taking the side of the Kuki and against the Maite. That is the point that Emma Nyangbi made at her press conference yesterday, which was reported by the Hindu. I'm trying to understand why do you believe they're taking sides? Because we have seen and we have experienced many incidents in Manipur, especially since May 3. First, if we speak about the May 3 incident that was broke out in Trochanpur, that time Assam Rifle was present at Trochanpur. When there was a violence broke out in Trochanpur, if the Assam Rifle or the other forces, whoever present in Trochanpur, could have controlled the situation at the moment, and if did that, if they did that, then the you know the condition of today would not come to this level. So from beginning from there, because when the houses of Trochanpur, Maite houses of in Trochanpur was set a blast, Assam Rifles was present there, state force was present there, and coming from there again in uh, Mori it started. Again, in the evening, it already, you know, uh, started sparkle in other parts of Delhi, especially in Infal Delhi as a retaliation. Again, from the next day, it spread all over in many periphery areas. So wherever Kuki, you know, the militants, we are not blaming the Kuki civilians. We are blaming the Kuki militants who did this miscarriage, this inhuman work. This time, so, when let, let, let me stop you. Let me stop you. The let me stop you because let's Why? get confused in the details. You're saying that whenever the violence started, whether it's Chura Chandpur or More or Kankopi, you're saying the Assam rifles stood by and did nothing. In other words, they allowed Kuki militants to attack Maite houses without stopping them. Is that why you now distrust them? Is that why you now think the Assam rifles have taken sides against you? 
Yes, yes, that is the thing because that experience not only broken. Okay. All yeah, your your, your, your line is... broke. Your line broke. Please start again. I said this incident. I mean, these things when the Kuki militant attacked the Maite area, the there always there was the presence of a sound rifle or the other central force. But till May, there were no other forces coming up but in the first week of may already we got lots of you know central forces deployed and coming into the manipur so even then the incident never stopped so that's why mainly the assam rifle we find present in the those side that's why people have started especially the women have started you know uh, distrust mr haibam i should tell you that the assam rifles denies this they say you have misunderstood them. They say that they have not taken sides against the Maite, that this is a misrepresentation. How do you respond to their position? See, in that case, you should. I mean, as a, you are a very famous and you are a very prominent journalist of uh, India. So the, the media people of India and also the government should you know, send or form a very uh, neutral body and find out whether the whether the minor parties blame or the mistrust towards Assam rifle. What we are saying is right or wrong. This invest in investigation should be done. We have lots of evidence, so you should find out that. And so find after finding out this, then you the the government or the people of India should decide. Yes, with how much. We are misunderstanding them. How much they are misunderstanding us? This should be clear. Can I ask you this? If, I am a very. Can, can a I very ask you this? If an inquiry is set up as you are suggesting it should be, would you be willing to make the evidence and proof you have available? Yes, there are lots of evidence available. You even in social media, many evidence are viral. So you must be, you know. Obviously, there must be lots of evidence, and there is there are evidence, so you can find it. You have to find out. Then okay. this mistrust should be, you know, this mistrust should be, uh, you know, destroyed, and and it should be, you know, reconciliation. The, Let me until then, you, and just blaming game is not. Absolutely, I agree with you. A blame game between the Assam Rifles and the Mira Paibi or Maite Society is not in the interest of Manipur. It's not in the interest of India, which is why. I thought it was important that I should ask you why you distrust them. You've now explained that you do that because repeatedly when Kuki militants have attacked the Maite, you believe the Assam rifles stood by. They did not stop the Kuki militants. They allowed you to be attacked. Let me now put to you three things that the Assam rifles have told the media about the Mira Paivi specifically. First of all, Assam Rifles claim, and I think they've even put out videos as evidence of this, that the Mira Paibi block roads, they block army convoys, and at least, and at least on one occasion, the Mira Paibi are alleged to have looted an army convoy yes. and stolen food. This was also published in the Hindu. How do you respond to that, first of all? Before I answer that, let me just complete one sentence. You asked me about why we have, you know, lots of mistrust. I'll just give you uh, two, three incidents, not more than that. One incident on uh, in Torbung, Bangla, when uh, the cookie have, you know, uh, claimed to bury the mass grave in one of the uh, government areas, sericulture land. There are lots of people, Maite people, have marched to us to, you know, we are not, we are against it because the mass grave should be done in somewhere in a very proper place. We respect the, you know, the soul of everyone for both Maite, for both Kuki. All, we respect it. But, you know, just without getting a proper permission, just, you know, just alarming to the uh, people of Manipur that the mass grave will be done in one of the sericulture land of under the uh, government of India, that also in the uh, Bishnupur district. So when we 
march forwards to that area the especially the assam rifle they and the other central forces who have deployed there have blocked they do lots of latices they do fire uh, this bullets uh, rubber bullets then even we have even uh, you know shocked by the electric in the uh, bar wire which was display over there again in palen very recently palen when there was a you know kind of uh, uh, attacking or defending when assam rifle coming out and even they aim the gun towards the you know women so if if they said that that was to control the mob then yeah why those things are not done in kuki area when kuki you know started or they were trying to attack the civilian so there was always an imbalance you know aid of the assam rifle that we feel so that is the reason of mistrust the rest you can you know do lots of research lots of you know okay i understand what you're saying we keep losing that connection so we need to be a little quick before it breaks completely i understand what you're saying okay now let me put to you the three points the assam rifles make specifically about the mira paivi and they've put out videos about this they say that you block roads you block army convoys and at least on one occasion you looted an army convoy of substantial amount of food and this was reported by the hindu newspaper as well how do you respond to this first of all see looting of food i don't know i am really sorry about that i don't know but Yes, there are times when we block the movement of a sam rifle in the road because if I give you one very the my witness example of my area, my place is Sugunu, in uh Kalting district. It's a very neighboring to Trochanpur district also. It our attack was you know done on twenty seven twenty eight midnight at around two a.m. two thirty a.m. in the morning. So before that, from till uh till third May. to 26 may we have been in continuous you know in a good uh, kind of uh, informative with the assam rifle i whenever we got some kind of rumor the movement of the kra or the movement of the other uh, group of the kuki militant we informed them sir we got this news so please crotch people are having lots of appearances so in a very friendly way we had lots of conversation and we informed the news whatever we got they always ensure us that don't worry nothing will happen we are you know uh, keeping them under our control and we are in touch with them on daily basis they will not do any miscreants towards the civilians once i ask them if if the militant people have you know started attacking the civilians then do you have the but, but order can, to... can can i stop you are you ex... can i stop no, you let me complain I... just a moment miss ahibam are you explaining why you block convoys are you explaining why you block roads i'm not sure what the point you're making is which is why i've interrupted this is because of the mistress i am i am giving you the answer with why the mistress started because of the mistress only the road blockages have been started okay i am giving you answer of the both the question so that's why when we are insurance you know given that the militants the kuki su kadas militants will not do anything towards the civilian when they started just before even before half an hour of the attack in sugunu area then also i told both the officer the higher level officer of the 37 assam rifle then also they said nothing will happen but when seram was born the officer himself was present so okay. because of all these things i understand there might be some other problem but as a civilian as a civilian of you know manipur i also believe and trust and we also hope that yes our personal so, security so what you so what you're saying our life. what you don't do i don't want to get lost in the details cuz the audience will get confused but what you're saying is you block assam rifle convoys you block roads because of your distrust that's what you're saying isn't it that is so one and the one number two i'll give you because there are many instances where assam rifle have given you know supplying food and other you know uh, what we call weapons in some of the uh, areas where you know uh, firing have done 
to so there are instances instances because of that we have started you know uh, blocking of the roads when because when assam rifle want to go there and there was also incidents where they carry some of the uh, cookie people in their vehicle so there are instances so all of this you know pe the whole people have started mistrust and they ho we all assuming that they are siding the uh, cookie side so we have started okay. that kind of apprehension let me put to you a second point that the assam rifles have made yes. about mira paibi specifically the assam rifles have claimed that at the end of june some 1500 mira paibi surrounded the third army corps camp in east imphal forcing the army to release 12 militants from the kanglai yawal kana lu this is the group who was responsible for killing 18 soldiers in an ambush in 2015 in chandel and the 12 militants who were released included a man who calls himself lieutenant colonel morain sem tamba and he allegedly was the mastermind of the ambush in 2015 which killed 18 soldiers now when the mira paibi forced the army to release people who the army believes was responsible for killing 18 soldiers it deeply upset them how do you respond to this see about about this you again need to do a clarification when we asked the mira paibi of that area they said there is you know nothing kind in that way they those 12 Uh, people have released by the army themselves this is what we got but we are getting this two interpretation so you also kindly you need to do more research whether the news of this is whether it is true or wrong so there is a need of very clear uh, clarification on that because when we when we ask about this we are not getting such kind of news In other words you're saying this story put out by newspapers like the Hindustan Times and by the uh, army uh, itself you're saying it's am, false you're saying it's no, false I am not blaming I I am not blaming to the news hence they said they are putting up the stories or not but the story coming maybe from Manipur or maybe they are going and collected that should be you know again do the recheck and do cross check and do more research I'm saying this Okay now you mentioned Palel a moment ago just 2 days ago an article in Caravan that is a very well known magazine has details of how Mira Paibi obstructed the Assam rifles in Palel and secondly the article claims Mira Paibi also obstructed journalists who were trying to cover what was happening i quote from the article it says as they the assam rifles would breach one blockade the mira paibi would lay another one a little way down slowing the progress of the paramilitary forces to a crawl the article also accuses mira paibi of burning kukizo properties in the palel area this article came out 2 or 3 days ago how do you respond to this See, about the blockers we got the news and we experienced that even one journalist was uh, you know got bullet injured from the assam rifle site that was we got and there were many women who have injured and two people have killed in that incident in that palen spot now you are giving me a, you know very different uh, story again so again for that yet yeah, bani is not i don't know burning cannot be done by women the mira paibi burning how far it how done how it has done there has to be also you have to inquire because mira paibi doesn't go to the you know the uh, hill side and burn the houses never mira mira paibi never involved in that way there might be a burning and this firing that is between the uh, you know the miscarriages of buki militant or the they they call their miscarriages as uh, volunteers we also have lots of volunteers who whenever there was a kind of exchange of fire our volunteers have come out and you know do that so i don't know who have done that but i i am uh, strongly we've lost you again we've lost you again this agree that that burning of and yeah, destroying of cookies
I, I am still here. The main charge, Miss Ahibam, made by Caravan Magazine just two, three days ago, is that at Palel, deliberately and repeatedly, the Mira Paibi obstructed the Assam rifles. You, in fact, according to the magazine, reduced their progress to a crawl. How do you respond to that charge? Again, when they are, they said they're, they're claiming that is an obstruct, they are giving an obstruction to the, you know, obstructing the uh, Assam rifles. That again, I cannot agree to that because that is already I had explained you because of the past experience in these four months, we cannot just simply, you know, allow, you know, the movement of Assam rifle coming to, coming from any side to any side. So there, because of that, there was a kind of, um, uh, blockage or a kind of, uh, you know, uh, um, move, uh, movement blockage in Palin. They have beaten so many women. Many women got injured. And now they are claiming that the my, the Myra Paibi are obstructing to uh, Assam rifles. Okay. So, Let me ask you this. You want the Assam rifles replaced. Who should take their place in Manipur? See, for this question, I want to ask, I want to put up a question to you so that you ask to the people or to the concerned people, why Assam Rifle, who gave the Assam Rifle so much of power? Who is doing this? We are not against, well, we are not enemy to Assam Rifle or Assam Rifle are, are not enemy to us. They are there. The Assam rifle are in Manipur to protect the civilians' life for all, not only for Kuki, not only for Maitai, for any. It's for all. Why they are not doing according to their, you know, rule of law to protect the civilians for all? That means something is there. So I am not getting understanding why Assam rifle is doing the, this and who have, you know, given. Who is creating this confusion well, to the let people? Me, let me answer that question. The government of India has given the Assam rifles the power they use, and the government of Manipur has also given them power. Two governments, the central government and the state government. Remember, Assam rifles is part of the state of India, officially. Now I ask that question again. If you want them removed, who should replace them? Other paramilitary forces? or the army itself, or Manipur police? Who should replace them? See, if the central government or the Manipur government can assure us whoever is going to come, maybe whoever, I don't know any particular uh, central force. Okay, so whoever is going to replace them should be a very neutral person, very neutral, who will you know, serve as to protect the life of people of Manipur, then they can be replaced by that particular uh, forces. I don't know who is the particular force who will okay. be doing. Let me put this to you. Just as the Mira Paibe and a large section of Maite society wants the Assam rifles replaced, similarly, the Kuki want Manipur police who they believe side with the Maite against the Kuki, denied and stopped from entering the hill country. Would you accept that as well? That's what I'm telling. Why this should be, this should be demanded? In Trachanpur, in Kangkukui, there are still state forces people are designated there. They, are, they still have. Only the thing is that Maite are not there. But the... Uh, whoever in you know state force, the, maybe the cookie or the Wi-Fi or whoever, they are still there. So, in one state, if we are going to do the state police should be in Valley, then the central should be in uh, this one, the cookie area. Then definitely they are doing an uh, you know separate kind of things. So why it is becoming necessary to do that? We okay. don't want any. If I understand correctly, you want the Assam rifles removed, replaced, but you are not willing to accept the kooky demand to deny the Manipur police the right to enter the hill country. That is your position, isn't it? 
See, Assam rifle removal is not my question. I am saying that if Assam rifle have to be removed, then whoever is replacing them should be a very neutral. Who is neutral and you know should protect the life of both the all not only both all the people of Manipur. Okay. Just about Maitai Kuki. If they should be a protection people, they should protect the civilians' life and property of all in Manipur. Uh, what I mean is that. Now, according to a press conference that the Mira Paibi held in Delhi on Wednesday, your apex leader, Emma Nyangbi, said, and I'm now quoting the Hindu newspaper, that the buffer zones that separate the Maite and the Kuki are unconstitutional. She wants them removed. My question is why? Most people believe those buffer zones are essential to maintain peace between the Maite and the Kuki. If you remove them, militants from both sides will be in constant conflict. So why do you want the buffer zones removed? Is it Manipuri a military, I mean the militant state? I'm asking this, is Manipuri, Manipur is under the Kuki militant and the, the, they are saying they're Maite militant. Are we under them? We are still a democratic country, Karan. So why we need a buffer in a very small state? Manipur is not... That. Isn't it to maintain peace and ensure that miscreants from both sides don't attack the other side? It is the duty of the government to let stop both sides. Both side arms should be disarmed. When there is no firing, then peace process, the reconciliation can start. Until then, unless the arms are not disarmed, then from where the peace is going to come? But Let me ask you this. You but, said it is the duty of you said it is the duty of the government to restore law and order to ensure that there is peace. The crisis in Manipur is now almost four and a half months old. It started on the third of May. Today is the thirteenth of September. Why has it gone on for so long? Why is the Indian state, which is a very powerful state, unable to restore law and order? How do you answer that? This is what we are asking. How can I answer this? This is what we are longing. We are asking to the government again and again why this is happening, why we need to fight, you know, ourselves when it is the duty of the central force, security force of the state, both the state and the center, to stop the violence and to protect the civilians' life. Now we are in a position that we are protecting our own life, our, our uh, property by our own. Why this is letting? Let me ask you so, this. Who do you blame? With whom does the fault lie? With Biren Singh and the government in Imphal? Or with Narendra Modi, Amit Shah and the government in Delhi? Where does the fault lie? See, I, I cannot just blame one, one, one person. Okay. But India is not one state is it it's formed by different they have we have lots of ministers lots of MLAs from all the state from all the places then why it is only we are blaming one or one two person why we are playing playing this game it is the responsible of whole of central government the manipur government and the, this this is their responsibility okay my I last question my last question the mira paibe are highly respected, if not revered, as an institution by Maite society. In 2004, when the Manorma incident happened, you won a lot of respect right across the country. But in the last four months, the image of the Mira Paibi outside Manipur has changed. And my question is this. Have you been misunderstood by the rest of India? Have you been misrepresented, misreported by the media? Of course, that is only because of the misreported, misinterpreted. They have started, you know, uh, this kind of uh, misunderstanding towards the uh, Maira Paivi. Yes, that is because of that, because of the misinterpretation. And you blame the media for this, do you? If media are reporting, media, and again, who gave the report to them? So there are always, you know, the hidden, uh, I, if I ask you, 
who gave the information to particular uh, media to give or to give that information that Mara Pai be doing this and that? Who gave them? So the responsibilities is the media who is publishing, of course, and also who gave the information to them. So, so what you're education. saying to me, so what you're saying to me is that you have been misunderstood by the rest of the country, and that is because you have been misrepresented by the media. Again, you are repeating the same question. I said the media who is publishing and also from where they got the information, either they, who gave the information to them. So this should be cross-check. Current, this should be whenever the, you any media collect the information, that information should be, you know, uh, cross-check and it should be very uh, unbiased. It should be re check again. Just getting a piece of, you know, uh, news, a piece of story from one particular area and, you know, just publishing in a... You're, you're saying... You're saying you are the victims of bad journalism. I don't know. The, see, I'll tell you about Mani, uh, Sugunu. There is one place called Napat. Till today, none of the media are not, you know, getting into that place. Even the state media are not allowing to get inside because, again, they block the, uh, you know, the place. This is between the Trotanpur and uh, Bishnupur and Kaksing district. It's an adjoining area. So no one is allowed to get in, uh, especially the Maite journalists are not allowing to get into that place. And the mm -hmm. any of the national media, they never try to get into that. When they come to my place, I ask them, go to that place and please take the coverage of that place. They are scared. Why? That area is protected by the BSA, the CRP, the Assam Rifle, then the uh, Indo-Tibetan police. So your message so, today, and we're running out of time, so I'll ask you for a very short answer. Your message today is be fair in your reporting and coverage. Yes, be fair in reporting. Make sure we want peace. We are really, really waiting for the peace and reconciliation in Manipur. So go, take. we want step forward to bring peace. We okay. want, don't want any more firing in Manipur. So, Mr. This Haimbao, is, okay. I thank you for this interview and I thank you in particular for making time to explain what the Mira Pai B stand for, how they've been misunderstood, and to talk in detail about your relationship with the Assam Rifles and why you have come over the years to distrust them and why you believe that they are not fair to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on The Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me.